Once there was a writer who was great at writing interesting articles about different things. They worked really hard and wrote many stories that people loved. But one day, they got stuck and couldn't find any new ideas for their next story. They tried thinking about different topics, but nothing grabbed their attention. They checked books and searched online, but nothing clicked. They started to worry that they had no more ideas or were facing writer's block. But then, they took a deep breath and decided to stop worrying about it for a bit. Instead, they focused on other things for a while. In a serene forest stroll, the writer, without any intention of conjuring a topic or dwelling on writing aspirations, unexpectedly found inspiration strike. They realized that what they sought effortlessly emerged when they stopped striving. Encountering an intriguing paradox, the writer desired productivity, yet the more they pushed, the less they accomplished. However, upon releasing the immense pressure to be productive, they found themselves able to write again. It seemed that striving didn't always grant us what we desire. In fact, it could work against us. What's happening here? Author Aldous Huxley first defined the law of reversed effort as follows. The more we try to do something consciously, the less we shall succeed. So could we increase our chances of success by consciously ceasing to strive for it? Could results come when we let go? This video delves into the law of reversed effort, also known as the backwards law, exploring the idea of how outcomes might arise when we least expect them. A long time ago in ancient China, a merchant encountered a sage rumored to be among the wisest. The merchant attempted to impress the sage by recounting the immense profits from his latest trade deal. The sage nodded, but didn't seem particularly impressed. Later, the sage invited the merchant to visit, showcasing his grand estate and all the wealth amassed over the years. Yet, the sage remained unfazed. Instead, he questioned the merchant on why he sought to impress him with material possessions. Perplexed, the merchant didn't understand the query, prompting the sage to remind him of the words of Lao Tzu saying, those who try to overshadow others darken their own light. Call yourself honest, yet you cannot know how mistaken you are. Boasting of success diminishes what one has achieved. We've been taught that success demands effort. However, exerting effort in various aspects of life can also prove unproductive. The merchant sought the sage's approval, but the more he tried, the less he seemed to impress him. The sage reminded us that the more we insist on showcasing our successes to others, the less they resonate. Why the constant need to remind others? People tend to be wary of those who incessantly boast and seek the spotlight. What are they trying to prove? It seems like they need to convince the world of their worth. Paradoxically, the more we try to impress upon the world our value, the less the world believes in the worth we possess. Had the merchant been less eager to impress, it might have been apparent. He could have allowed his accomplishments to speak for themselves. Those moments of revelation would have impressed the sage more. It spoke volumes about the merchant's character, not just because of his achievements, but because he lacked the need to boast displaying humility and inner confidence. It also showed a certain detachment from external objects like wealth and status. Thus, the law of reversed effort came into play again. By placing too much importance on the sage's opinion, he sabotaged the desired outcome. Regarding our psychological well-being, it seems the law of reversed effort operates here as well. Professor David Clark shares in his blog, The Runaway Mind, how excessive effort can hinder our ability to cope with emotional distress. For instance, in situations like competitions, exams, or job interviews, repeatedly reminding ourselves to perform our best under pressure can create intense strain. Intense effort and determination channel all our attention and energy towards our performance. You shine, but then comes the crash. You messed everything up. You've ruined it all, leading to one of the most embarrassing moments in your life. According to Clark, the mental control paradox applies to overcoming emotional distress as well. For instance, exerting too much effort to stop negative thoughts often backfires, amplifying the negativity. When we fall into the trap of mental control paradox, we realize that the more we try to manage our thoughts, the less successful we are at doing so. This aligns with the law of reversed effort. 
Clark discusses scientific research indicating that people aren't particularly adept at generating thoughts. However, the law of reversed effort seems to operate in quite the opposite manner. We could say that creativity flow and mental control often don't mix. Even if people excel at generating thoughts, forcing ourselves to enhance creative efforts often proves futile. The more we try, the less successful we tend to be. Versatile artist and educator Julia Cameron wrote in her book, The Artist's Way. Rather than allowing our ideas to organically grow, we often push, pull, outline, and try to control them. The creative process is a surrender, not control. It's about the mystery of creativity at its core. This surprises our creativity, occasionally experiencing spurts of development. For instance, moments when we're no longer actively seeking, like relaxing in the shower, walking in the woods, or just before falling asleep, the sought-after idea often spontaneously emerges. Evidently, through ancient teachings, they observed that pushing too hard might likely sabotage our performance. The Taoist scripture, Zhang De, illustrates this by narrating the story of an archer who excels in practice but falters in a tournament, unable to perform when competing for a prize. It demonstrates how placing excessive importance works against us. No matter what we do, when we overly value the outcome, even if we have the capacity to perform the task perfectly, we often feel tense. There's a sense of urgency, our minds preoccupied with the future, or even stuck in the past. When we dwell on past mistakes, we aren't truly present in that moment. The more we anxiously await tasks and their outcomes, striving to control and fixating on success, the more our performance might suffer. This is where the law of reversed effort surfaces once more. The more we crave success, the more it tends to elude us. Overemphasizing the outcome can impede our progress. Ancient Chinese thinkers understood how they could block their paths while trying to achieve something. Instead of forcing things, they advocated for Wu Wei, the concept of effortless action. Athlete Christopher Bergland, in an article in Psychology Today, explains the flow state of optimal performance and how we paradoxically bring it about by striving for it. It might seem counterintuitive, but a mindset devoid of striving increases an athlete's chances to enter the zone and perform effortlessly. It's the paradox of Wayne. Not striving, putting in less effort to win, often yields more success. When we explore our mental state, we find it characterized by the absence of thoughts about the past and the future. While Wu Wei leads to outcomes, those outcomes aren't the primary focus. It shifts from feeling like a task to a pianist playing a piece, a writer composing a novel, a soccer player in the flow of the game. When there aren't deep thoughts about future successes or past failures, an individual's performance remains untouched by those thoughts. This absence actually enhances performance. Hence, when we let go, we can say that the results come. As a consequence of not caring about the outcome, the mental and physical barriers we create for ourselves dissolve. Now, pure and responsive action in the present effortlessly engages with the current conditions. The more we fixate on desired outcomes, the less likely we are to contribute to them. Overemphasizing results parallels the archer's trembling in the Zhangzin story, a soccer player missing a penalty or a writer's block. Bear in mind, the weight of unnecessary worry, stress, and fear isn't merely emotional. It's a silent instigator of various physical and mental adversities. Think of them as seeds quietly planted within us. When watered by our attention, they sprout into health concerns that affect us deeply. Just as you tend to your physical health with diligence, nurturing your mental well-being is equally pivotal. It's the balance between these realms that contributes to your holistic health. Strive for moments of tranquility amidst life's chaos, valuing these pauses as much as any other task on your to-do list. Seek equilibrium between work and leisure, between ambition and serenity. Cultivating a positive mindset isn't just about seeing the glass half full. It's about recognizing the potency of your thoughts in shaping your reality. That's all for today. I hope you've truly enjoyed this video. If you did, check out our channel subscription, hit the like button, and share it with someone.